Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And tonight, we have a very special guest. This basketball head is a boys and girls high school great who was an all-city and all-Brooklyn performer. I had to correct that because in the flyer, it just says he was all-Brooklyn. Trust me, my guy was all-city. He was also part of the biggest, most dominating front line of the mid-80s. He's still at 6'8". Joe Fennell, 6'8". And Mr. Athletic Eric Brown, 6'6", who played like he was 6'8". This basketball head was a late bloomer who played with some of the best players in New York City. He's going to tell you. After boys and girls, he attended Iona College to take his game to the next level and become professional basketball player overseas for many years. So, without further ado, help me welcome to the show, boys and girls, great, and I own a college standout, Nesta Payne. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Yes. 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 You have you just stepped out into, into, into the world, world of chaos, chaos. Where, where everybody, everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Come on, come on, go hard. Tickets cause the game about to start. What's up, man? What's up, Pooh? What's going on? I'm good, man. Let me tell you something, fam. <laughs> you was one of my favorite people at Boys and Girls besides Mo Kirby, of course, and E. Brown. But me right. and you hit it off very well throughout your years before, you know, our separation going to college and going separate ways. Right. So I want to say, brother, it's a pleasure having you on the show. Man, and I'm glad I can kick it with you, man. Listen, listen, listen. It's been many years, and everybody has been, you know, doing their own thing. I, I first want to say for the brothers in ball who are not here today, who was passed on and moved on, I want to say rest in peace to everyone. Um, I may mention some names that those are the, the, those that are not here, but that's all in love. And that's all in, 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 in helping me get a greater perspective of life. Right. All is about life. And, you know, um, man, the history of ball. And, you know, I'm all about Brooklyn. So especially with, you know, I'm all about Brooklyn. I know the Uptown dudes, too, because what a lot of people don't know, I did start off Uptown in Manhattan. That's, yo, dinner. you blew my mind when you said that. I always thought know that. you was born, bred, Brooklyn, straight to boys no. and girls. First of all, Pat Burke told me the story of how Paul Brown watched you, Mo Kirby, and himself play, and y'all, all three of y'all supposed to go to boys and girls. Is that true? That is true. Paul, we, we was in a tournament. Let me let me see. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit you. We was in a tournament somehow. We ended up uptown in a tournament. Now, I played... I played with a lot of people uptown. See, see, my, my, my career is split between really Brooklyn yes. and uptown. Yes. But it was uptown first because right after junior high school, I ended up at King, Martin Luther King. And somehow, Manhattan Center just closed. Yes, yes. So everybody from Manhattan Center. Well, well, well not Manhattan Center, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin. Franklin, yes, <laughs> yes. Right. right, so Benjamin Franklin, the team really just switched to King. Right. Now, now should I tell you who the team is? Listen, it's Walt. I, John it's Walt. Walton told me about some of them, but tell me the rest. It's Walt, Kenny Hutch, Boo, Singletary, 
right? The coach will stand dinner, right? So that's really the uptown team where I really started learning the fine points of the game, the basketball IQ, right? A lot of people don't know that Walter Berry played a big part for me because he's the one that taught me to get in the gym and I used to have to meet him in the gym to, just to pass him the ball. Learning the passing skills. For, for, for our audience. Oh, I can go. I can go. For, can for go. our audience who probably never heard or saw Walter Berry play, Ooh. explain to him who the truth was. He had that name, oh, the oh, truth. He's still to this day because he's still up. Yeah. this day, I would say. He had that name, the truth, for a reason. You put the ball in his hand, anywhere on that court for his size, he's going to give you the business and the truth. Facts. And that's a fact. Play, no play, of the year, that's a fact. play of the year at St. John's, right? Yeah. He wasn't the player in the Big East. He was player of the year the whole college. He, he was, was playing the whole college. the whole college. And I don't, even know if Walt, I don't even I don't even know if Walt even remember me, but I, I I'm the skinny kid who he grabbed because remember, too, a lot of people don't know, right? I'm an island boy. Yes. I'm an island boy. My yep. family is the, the, the Trinity family from Brooklyn. <laughs> so the sports we was playing was, sports we was playing was running track and playing soccer. Right. So Walt saw me at at, at Mom the King. He's like, dude, you six four. What are you doing, playing soccer and running track? He said, Come on with me, man. All you're gonna do is come and you're gonna start learning how to pass and catch the ball. Pass and catch the ball. Now everybody that know me, from Brooklyn, they know one thing. My athletic ability was to jump out the gym. You, you was, and you was tall already. First and of I was all, tall already. We gonna get to the, the, we the gonna game. Y'all was just punching our shit out the gym. We gonna get yeah. there. Yeah. The early yeah. Lincoln days. So to the right. So I already had that ability, but everything else, right? I didn't have. I didn't have the 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 IQ. I, I at that point in time, I didn't have the offense. I really didn't know how to shoot. I really didn't know how to post up. I really didn't know where to run and post up when. How? How to trail the point guard? How to trail all that stuff, right? So I so that learning thing for me started off a little late, right? So when Paul Brown saw me punch somebody's shot out of the park and it went on the FBR drive, he called me over and said, "You from Brooklyn?" Next thing I know, I'm sitting at Boys and Girls High School with Joe Fennell. Me and Joe Fennell sitting on the, man, we sitting there and we looking at Eric Brown, Ed Davender, um, Anthony Alston, Trev, Al Young. And we're looking at him and we're saying, there's no way we're going to make this. And I'm saying, dude, I don't, I don't even have these skills. There's no way that we're going to make it. But somehow we did. Somehow. But we hard work, though. You, you couldn't pass up on two dudes standing 6'8". Right? That's the and, front court. and you guys six, eight, were just six, learning then. Yeah. You guys were yeah. learning then, right? So yeah, I was learning. So a coach have to look at what his players might become. Right. Right? So right. that's that was, was you guys. And right. you had to set up and plan for the future because bug out and guys are leaving. Right. Right. So when the United States got a front court that's 6'8", six, 6'7", six, and 6'6", six, six, in high school, Yo, at that time. Fam, let me explain something to y'all. Our basketball heads out there, we played them in 19... First of all, we played them in 1984. Lost to them by one. Robert Gilmore, Captain Ed Davis, Air Ball. That's right. And, and that created the biggest fight in Brooklyn history between Coney Allen and Crosstown. The next year we played them, they kick our ass by 20. Wipe us right off the court. Yo, your guys was our Detroit Pistons. Y'all right. was our Detroit Pistons. Right. That's why we were able to do the thing we did afterwards. Right. Because that next year we won it. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. But you, took it. you you guys. Because you went hard against you us. Guys, and you guys made us tougher. Because of that front line, then you had good guards. But if we can't score. Right. Right. And then we had Gilmore, Rob, 
right? You call him BVP, Mr. Defense, and off yes. the backboard. Anything he hit off the backboard was money. Facts. Was money. Rest in peace, Rob. Rest Gilmore, in peace. For sure. Rest in peace. All right. Let, let's, let's start this. Let's ask start the question. This. Because the first question I didn't ask you, because we started rolling on into this, which I yeah. asked everyone is, who introduced you to the game? Oh, man. I, I got to go way back. I was always around the game because my family was Cold Cell Brown. Cold Cell used to come in. I'm going to go a little further back than that. The first time I was introduced to a basketball, right, was CYO with Chico and Rashi Bob. Chico! Yo, another legend, rest in peace, Chico. The rest in peace, right, at, at, at St. Peter Clavis, because my family, we, we, we were part of St. Peter Clavis. We used to go to church there. I went to, I went to elementary school there, St. Peter Clavis. Wow. That was the first time I was introduced to, to basketball. And I'll never forget this. My mother gave me money to go to the sneaker store on Atlantic and and um and on North Street. What was the sneaker store? That, uh, what was that sneaker store? Uh, uh, it's Atlantic, still there. Who knows that it's sneaker? Still, huh? And not Tom Dick and Harry. Murray's no, no, Corner. No. Murray's, Murray's Corner. Murray's Corner. Yeah, it's still there. Right. So I buy some. So I'm supposed to get ball sneakers. I buy sky blue Converse. With the lace. The canvas, the canvas, the canvas one, the canvas one, the canvas one, right? I made Lincoln, so, I made Lincoln team with a pair of blue pair. Eight, right? Eight. So right. I walk in the gym, right? And Rashi Bob looked at me and said, yo, you, dude, you know you, you can jump and stuff, right? He said, yeah. He said, I, mean, I, I don't know if this one will last. The second time I went to block somebody's shot, the whole bottom of the canvas ripped off. The whole bottom. And Bob looked at me and said, I'm your coach. Always remember what I tell you. Now go sit the rest of the game. That was it. That was it. So it was Rashi Bob, Chico. And from then on, I had Cosell. Cosell used to come and pick me up and, and, and started formulating me into the game, taking me to the Brevoy tournament. That's why, I, and, then, and then he handed me off to, listen, right? Because he used to call me Ness, Big Ness. Yo, little Vaughn, I want you, I want Big Ness to play with you today. And I want you Hold to do on. that with him. You talk about Greenboy Little Vaughn. I'm not Greenboy Little Vaughn. 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 He's a grown, grown man. man. Vaughn. Right. I was just Vaughn. with him today. Yo, it's so crazy. I was just with Vaughn today. Vaughn. It's crazy. Vaughn will remember me because Vaughn is the one who really, first of all, Vaughn is Vaughn. So if Vaughn said I'm, I'm untouchable in certain areas of certain things, I'm just untouchable. I'm going to go there and play ball. And whatever first happens, ball, I have no First of all, let's stop, Ness. You, had, you started off with Cosell Brown. Cosell Brown, when he was in high school, legend. he was the number two guard behind Isaiah in the country. In the country. Legend. So you had him. You had yeah. Walter Berry. Yeah. Then you had yeah. my guy yeah. Vaughn, who's definitely a brief ball legend, and he will be here next Wednesday. Right. So that's why... That's why when people don't understand, my athletic ability had to catch up to my basketball IQ. That's a, lot, that, that's, that's, that's a deep thing for people to understand. My athletic ability, because the basketball IQ I was getting from Cosell, I got from Wall, I got from, um, um, from, from, from Vaughn, right? And then I go to over there on, on North Street and Lafayette, and I watch, and I watch Carrie, Dale, and Carrie Scurry, Dale, and all of them in, in, in playing in the gym over there by Marcy Poole. So I'm sitting and I'm watching, right? But Poole, in my mind, in my mind, because I'm, I'm, I'm around these legends so much, I'm not thinking of myself in that way. You know what I mean? Because cause I'm, I'm I'm, you know, I, was, I was always humble. You know that. I was never this big. I was always humble until... The IQ and the physical game started catching up. And then everybody's in my head, yo, yo, you nice, son. Yo, you nice, son. But I never, I, I was to sit back on that. Because you know how it is. Yeah, I'm nice in New York. But then when we go on the Riverside trip to California, you got a 611 dude from Iowa that'll rip me apart. So I always kept that middle piece, that middle piece humble. And I think that's what made me keep stepping up the ladder, keep stepping up the ladder. 
You know? Yo, I thought you was one of the, until I got to know you, I thought you was one of the meanest people in the world. Because of what? the court. Oh, yeah. You didn't, smile, you didn't play around. But look who I'm at. You, you got to have, see, on the court and off the court, right? You know, yes. if you don't, you, listen, you know if you don't come correct playing with, playing with Vaughn, oh, that's going to be an issue. He's going to look at you like, you know if you don't come correct playing with Cosell when he said, I need that rebound. Dude, go get that rebound, right? But that's, that's, that's the Brooklyn in us. That's, that's the difference. Brooklyn, we, that's what we do. Wow. And then off the court, you know what I'm saying? Off the court, you know, we go out right. of the park, we might have a 40 together. That's real. That's you know? so real. So, so where in Harlem were you from before you moved to Brooklyn? I was always Brooklyn. Gates Avenue. All my family is so, Gates okay. Brooklyn. So I'm, 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 I'm safe. I'm safe there. Cause yeah. I, always, I knew you was from Brooklyn, but you said you were in the school of town. It's the same way how guys went to school of other boroughs back then. Right. Got you. Gotcha. Right. I don't. I just don't know how. Oh, well, I ended well up. now, now because they don't. They do it. They did it more back then than they do it right now. Right. I just don't know how I ended up like after my eighth grade, right? Because I went to New Bedford Catholic Junior High School. So I don't know how I ended up from the eighth grade. How I ended up at King. And then let me hit you with another thing. When I ended up with King, right? Who grabbed me under his wing? Believe this or not, right? was Frank Mickens. Because he was the principal at King. Thank you. So I think Mick wow. had something, I think Mickens had something to do with me along with Brown, well, with Mendoza and Paul Brown, getting to boys and girls. Yo, I, I want to let you know, my guy Ted Portwine is on here, showing yeah. you love. My guy Rick Combs, showing you love. What up to my Got guy you. Ron Soufrat, the A-Game Podcast. Sue Bella, she played, she's the boy... She played that boys and girls too. All right, all right, all right. So she's all definitely right. on here. That she, DR she Payne. Yeah, when I shout her out. Yeah, that okay. DR Payne. That's my son. So give him, give him, give give, give him a DR shout Payne. out. DR Payne. Tell him you about know. me. Tell him about me, Pooh. Your dad. Your dad was a problem in these streets in New York. Okay. For sure. For sure. So listen. One of the things I wanted to know, like, at what age did you really fall in love with the game, like? When you really start to say, damn, when my athletic ability, when my uh, IQ catch up with my athletic ability, I'll be good. At what age when you started making that correlation? I fell in love with the game when the year that we were supposed to, Boys High was supposed to be picked to take it all. I don't know if you remember that year. That was that was a that was a hard. I think I don't know if that was after Pearl or that was after. Yes, Pearl. it was right. your year. It was the Ed Devin year. Yes, because remember when I when I transferred into the high, I'm still learning. And you got Ed, the All American. You got E Brown, All City. You got thing, and I haven't really caught up yet. And it was in them practices of the dude. The 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 intensity in them practices created a greater love for the for the players. Like I used to have, I'm gonna mention Trev. Trev, Trev yes. His brother Ty Brown. Trev Davis. Trev brother Davis. Brother of Tyrone Davis. Davis, right. Yes. I mean, getting in shape and people crying. I don't know if these young boys notice it. And, and they put garbage cans around the gym because they know you're gonna throw up because it's gonna be that type of practice. Right? That little camaraderie right there. And I was getting better. So not, not only now I could block people's shots, you know I wasn't shooting the ball with all the people, everybody shoot the ball. But now I learned how to, oh, half of their shots they're going to miss. Let me go tap dunk it in. So I started getting a little successful, but, but it, had, it had one practice, dude. I mean, I don't, know if we, I don't know if we lost to Camden. We went to Camden and we lost to Camden and we came back. Oh, 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 oh. Right? Did you win the championship or that year? That year, I think we just went to we went to Camden to play something, and we came back, right? And we lost a tough game in Camden, and the bus was just quiet. And then I think we came back straight. This is unbelievable. We got off the bus from playing an overtime game in Camden at eight, nine, ten o'clock at night, and we had to go straight to the gym. Yeah, parents yeah. would be having that right about now. Yeah, yeah, that's, we, that's, were, that's, we were that's, lucky. That's, we were lucky and different back then. 
Right. And another thing, your God Chip from your uh, Iona days. Chip, Chip, what's up? Bit, huh? Huh? What's up, Chip? Yeah, yeah. I want to make sure I get that in there. Yeah. That's crazy that you say that, man. Yeah. So, and then and when, we went, when we went into the gym that night, you know how everybody is. Everybody's mad. People want to fight each other. The thing. Next thing you know, like we had to do real man. We was doing so many sprints and and running and little stuff like that. And that right there changed me because at one two o'clock in the morning, when we were sitting at the side and we just had to sit there, right? My love for the game increased a hundred because then I learned it was much more really than the game. It was about the guys too. And that's where my that's where it kind of sort of kicked. That's where inside it sort of kicked in for me. Wow. No, I, I was going to say, because the next question was, who was your main influence outside of your parents? And, and you had a lot, man. Yo, dude. Main, at a different point in time, I think maybe it, was, maybe, it was, maybe it was God's way. I kept getting handed off, but I'm young. I don't know. Like, you know, when I'm playing with Vaughn, you be like, Vaughn is nice. But, but I don't know because I'm young that Vaughn is a legend. Already. I don't know. Already, already, at that age, already. Kid. Yes. Already. I don't know. Yep. Like, 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 now I'm finding out that, right, I saw Cosell play at, I played with Cosell in an LG tournament, right, and I just kept grabbing rebounds and giving him the ball. Go. Right? And every time he went, oh, my God, he just did that doing that on the court? Right? I said, no, no, no. This, this is how it went. Cosell, stay right here at half court. They're going to miss. Give me that. Play it, Cosell. Go. In a championship game. Yo, I'm so upset I never saw him play, yo. Wow. In a championship game. So I wouldn't particularly say it was one. I said, for me, from my experience, I kept getting handed off, and I kept being around great players. Like, even in the summer park tournaments, to see Andre Sky Irving play at an older, right, right? I was in awe of Carrie Scurry. The ease that he can score, the ease that he can just jump off the floor. It looked like he wasn't jumping. It looked like he was a butterfly. Uh, give me that. Facts. Facts. Right? The, 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 the ease to see these players play, and I'm constantly being handed off, and they're constantly in my air, you're going to be great. 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 Just do this. You're going to be great. Just do that. Right? And then on to boys and girls. Now, I'm meeting G. Now, Gerald Green is the ultimate go harder. So right? to the general. No, I got, no, I got G Green. Me, G, and, me, G and, and Gil. Brother. Sleep at each other's house. They come to the house to eat. Do, 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 Riverside together. Right? So, now I got G. Because, you know, G had rough hands. So, you didn't want G to slap me. G hands was big and rough with, with, with that basketball. Right. And G is the old. When you play with him, you got to go hard. There's no ifs, ands. Fact. Ifs, ands about it. So, oh, I would say along the line, in, in, in my career and in my history of basketball, right, that was for me. I kept being with great people. Not, but not only great people. Great players and legendary players. Also coaches. Right? I got Mick got me under the wing. He's a principal, but he's telling me about life. Frank Mickens. And look who just joined. The general himself, Gerald Green. That's my man. <laughs> That's my man. It's I just awesome. started talking about it's it. Awesome. He knows it. He knows That's it. Right. You play with G Green, you gotta go hard. That's I'm gonna right. tell you a G Green story real quick. Uh-huh. We're playing, in a, we're playing in a tournament uptown. It was over by the, the, the Deegan or something, right? First of all, you walk into the gym. It's an inside gym with half moon backboards. I should have knew better. Chicago style, right? Chicago style. I should have knew better, right? So we playing, right? And I'm playing against Chris Brooks. But I didn't know Chris Brooks in high school was the man. That's yes. what big guys. Yes. But here I am. I didn't know Chris Brooks was Chris Brooks. I mean, he had the muscles coming out of his neck and all that stuff. You know how Chris was back then. <laughs> all right? about Pete Chris Brooks, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chris Brooks. You, you know what I'm saying? So G come down. G cross the kid over. Pow! Behind the back. Pow, 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 pow. 
the crowd goes crazy. And G gives me a shovel pass. G gonna start laughing at this one. He gives me a shovel pass, right? And I don't know where my mind was. I go up all week with the Patrick Ewing butter roll, right? And I, 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 I finger rolled it on top of the backboard, right? I'm 6'6", six, six, trying to finger roll on a half moon backboard, right? Chris Brooks jumps out of the gym and slam my layup on top of the half moon backboard in front of the whole gym. Bam! The whole gym went crazy. They ran out the gym. And G looks at me and said, come here, man. Right? And this is my man. I can tell everybody. G looks at me and said, come here, man. Because you know how G go hard. G slaps the shit out. G, pow! <laughs> you from Brooklyn, son. You never go, you never go soft on this thing. You never go to the thing. You never, you never, you never, right? From that day on, I never went soft to the backboard. I never went soft to the backboard. Wow. From that day wow. on. That's a learning. That, that's a learning thing. He was absolutely right. I mean, yo, pool, they stopped the game and everything for 10 minutes. And I had to sit there and take it. And G talking about, you should not sit in the cinema. Come on, man. We back on the court. Let's go. Let's well, go. was that the point you decided just to bang it on everybody? Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's under that basket from now on, because I went through that, yo, you're getting banged yo, on. If you oh, was under the basket on you. when he had the ball, his arms is like two of my arms. Right. He got the longest arms in the world. And once that ball go up, you ain't getting it. So you just smile, smile, tap yeah, yourself yeah. in the head. Yeah, you get get out the way. Get right. out the way. Get out the way. And you and also to remember, I I average double. He said, he said, that's my man, big nerdy. <laughs> yes. You said the G. Remember, because I remember my IQ was catching up to another thing, and I had that yeah. business in the wrong arm. Pool, remember, I averaged double figures in high school just off of tap dunks. I didn't shoot the ball. You had Eric, you had Ed, right? You had Al, all of them shooting. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't shoot the ball. You know? It's so, so crazy. Yo, let me tell you, man. There's certain people I, I like remember. You're like one of them that I remember seeing and watching your progress. Yeah. And seeing some of the things. And then you developed that turnaround jump shot. Oh, that was right? that, that was the mean. So I went from that, and then I got the nickname from that because people don't know. I used to, we we used to we used to be in the gym five thirty in the morning, six o'clock in the morning before everybody else, all the students came to the hot. We had to be there to work on our game. And once I saw Olajuwon footwork, right? Because remember the soccer thing, I can emulate yes. that. Yes. Yes. So from then on, when I saw that, and I saw the large one, I got that little thing. I mean, I must have shot, I don't know, 1.6 million turnaround from 10 to 12 feet just right. to get that down pat. Just to get that turnaround, right. got you down pat. That was all footwork. And then, then, I, took that, and then I took that with me to, to, to Iona, right? And the, 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 being a freshman at Iona, I didn't really understand how I did so well, Pooh. Because, really, I was just back to the basket. You know what I'm saying? You know, Chip, and Chip had the shot. Everybody else had the shot, but it was facing But you had so much experience going up into Iona, right? Right. Because those, those things, those muscle memories, all those things that you practiced and you worked on, and as you kept improving, those things led you to have a good year, your first good year at Iona. Yeah. A.A.B. Love. Give me a call. How you doing? Thank you for joining us. Please give me yeah. a call, please. So yeah, yeah, that's that. I can see that happening. Yeah. Did you and Sean Green play together? Sean Green came in my senior year, transferred in. Because he, he he came from NC State, correct? Yes, he came from NC State. He came from NC State my senior year. Oh, I, I, I don't know if he had to. Uh, um, I, I can't remember if me and Sean played a full year. I don't know if it was something back then, right? He should be honest, because I speak, I speak to Sean all the time, because, you know, he does nutrition and stuff. Sean, like that. I don't know what I keep telling Sean, yo, well, another one of my guys, yo, come yeah. on, fam. Yo, people know I'm Sean Green. I'm going to tell him. A lot of people don't know his story. Deep story. They know he played, he, high, you know, high school All-American, he played in the yeah. NBA, 
But there's a yeah. lot of in between that, you know. Back and forth. Know, George. Back and forth. A lot of people see what what else was what else was I would say when you asked me who was the one person, right? I can go from 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 the Chico days on up to Vaughn, Cosell, Coach Mick, Coach Ray, Haskins, Timmy Vincent, Brooklyn, USA. I dabbled and I and I and I touched in all, right? And I can just go to from from that being with G, G taking me to Riverside, traveling with Riverside. You know, Riverside got the plug into the Catholic school to Iona. So that, I, for, for me, for me, I had a balance. A lot of people's stories are not like that. A lot of people's stories, you know, they, they, they go through some stuff just to get to a JUCO, just to get to this. You know, I, I kind of sort of had that balance up until um, I ended up going to the CBA and the Michigan team. Well, we're we, we gonna we go, we go, hold on. You're moving too fast. Moving yeah. too fast. We're not gonna right. speed through this mess. Okay, we okay. Just we got hours. We mess. got hours. We got hours. Nah, nah. All right. I'll give a shout out to my niece. Hey, baby girl. We're gonna work. All right. right. I'm getting my stuff off. We're gonna work. Now, my niece, future billionaire, she's gone. All right. So, right. definitely. Uh, Styles by Nita. Nita's hair collection. For you females out there, AB, check out my niece. She do hair too. Got so, you. yo, Ness, who was the best player? Right? Now you played with a lot of play people. A lot <laughs> of people schooled you. A lot yeah. of people mentored you. Who was the best player in the neighborhood when you was coming up? Dang. Why you had to go there with that? The These best are the that we asked for basketball. Hold on. Hold on. And before you answer that, think about that. Your coach slow. He did not play with Steve Burke and Gary Springer. They were before no. him. They were before me. Yes. 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 I know yes. that for sure. I came in. If anybody want to know, I came in right after Tony Hargraves. We, me, Chip, Glenn, came in after Tony Hargraves. Um, Richie Simmons was already there. A lot transferred Richie in. Richie Simmons. I yeah. love Jeff, the New York Jeff Wilder right. was already there. Right. I came in in that era. So and listen, was, all of you guys, all of you guys who was at Iona during that time, yeah. all of you guys would have been ACC, Big Ten, Big Ten. Big, yes. if y'all played in the South. Right, Chris, you played in the South. to the NBA. Right. That's legit. But that's to tell you how many, that's to tell you how many, how many top level ball players in that era was inundated just in New York City. Everybody yo, can get that. Yo, Everybody yo, can get that label. You want me to run it down? Run I got it down. the all city team. Run it down. Eric Brown. Mm. Ronald Edwards. Andrew Jackson. Kilt us. Kilt us. Jerry Green. Rock. This yeah. is the first team. John Morton. Those two became teammates at Seton Hall. Went to right. the NCAA championship. And the last guy in that first team, the great Boo Harvey. Boo Harvey, that right. Was the first team. Eric Brown. Ron Edwards. Joe Green. John Morton. Right. Boo Harvey. Second team, Moses Scary. Jordan LB. Right. Great and NCAA champion. Right. Jeff Shepard. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. from Jeff K. Right. Who else did he mention? R.I.P. Chris Brooks. Chris Brooks. Eric Ice Leslie from Grady. From Grady. Somebody yeah. I was the e Easy E. Constantly. Easy E. Brian Stubbs from Lafayette. Right. right. And then you got the third team that runs off Robert LeBur, the seven footer from Clinton. Seven footer, right, right. Rest in peace. Joe Fennell. Right. Greg Poindexter. Right. Lamar Thornton. Right. Remember Lamar Thornton? Remember Lamar Thornton, right. Peace. Nesta Payne. Right. Everybody couldn't be on that top level. And then the best of the rest, Joe King, Brent McCullough, Al McCullough. I mean, Billy Singleton, right? Britt McCullen, Al, McCull uh, Al McCullough, Elijah Middleton, Pat Jones, Matt Tucker. Right, right, right. Big Matt Tucker. And the list goes on. On and on and on. But that first 15. Now, 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 too, Pooh, that's all D1. Yes. That's all Division One. Yes. Everybody signed Division One, going somewhere. Wow. That, that was a crazy list. Now, now, 
we have this conversation all the time, right? Uh, when we talk about coaches. And the fact that, Mo Les, what up? The fact that you guys, your front line was Division One, right? Right. Then y'all had like another got, couple of guys on the bench who went Division One as well. But from the time Paul Brown got the boys and girls, he came in with Dwayne Pearl sure. Washington. Right. Arguably, one of the best point guards in New York City history. Ever. Okay? One of the best. The, now, no, okay. I'm biased. I'm we always argue about Paul Brown not having the best coach in the building. Okay. You may see it differently, but from the outside looking in, all the players that he's had and not one championship. Okay. Okay. Now, this has nothing to do with y'all. I'm just right. saying that they can coach. Because right. I know we we have Bobby Hart's thing, right? right? And the year we won the city championship, nobody expected us to win it. Right. Correct? Right. Now, he had Pearl. Then he had Ed Davida, another McDonald's All-American. So he had back-to-back -back McDonald's All-Americans, plus you guys. Right. Plus us. Plus, plus, plus he had, uh, yeah, well, okay. All right. All right. All right. I, yeah, and, I, and I always yeah. said, during those eras, you guys had the best teams. We had the best right? teams. Let, let, me, let me ask you a question. My 83 Lincoln team was very yeah. good. Right. Let me but ask you a question. all of them left. Damari Riddick, remember? Keith yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. From an outside person looking in on that team, right, could outside people see a rift amongst that team? That, 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 that rift, that transfer rift from Aham and the Boys and Girls team didn't really mix? It's a deep question. Can outside people see that? I'm going to ask the audience. Now, I... I'm gonna keep it 100. Yeah. I never been thought about. I never been thought about that. Yeah. Because I... when when just like Manhattan Center, yeah. when Alexander Hamilton closed, everybody went to the high. Right. Some people went to Western House. Some people, you know, they kind of yeah. split up. But the majority yeah. of people um, then went to Boys and Girls. Right. Was right. there a rift? Some people always said there was. Some some people, not me, because I'm I'm playing, but I've heard this from outside people to say that the reason we didn't go as far is because that transfer rift wasn't really fixed, right? As as this for us to move forward, because you know to win a city championship, you got to be on one page. Pool. To win a city championship, you got to be on one page. There can't yes, be no yes, yes. there can't be no extras. Nobody thinking, or, okay, he took a three. I'm going to come down. I'm going to take a three on this side, too. Right? Everybody give me the same page defense. All right, you know what? Right? I'm a little tired. I'm going to do the Matador so I can run down and get, and get my two so I can score my 25. Right? Some people said they were seeing that. Now, me, right, because remember, I'm kind of sort of this person coming in, me and Joe Fennell. We're coming in from the outside, if you understand what I'm saying. We're just playing. But a couple of people coming down to the end were saying, yo, the reason you guys lost, because let me tell you something. Boo, Ron Edwards, and then Andrew Jackson, when we played them at St. John's to go to the city championship, dude, Ron stood in that corner and just shot the lights out. We tried to press Boo. Look, that you was a doing that. That. You ain't doing that. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Ain't no, way, ain't, no, press ain't no way to press the ball. Hmm? Ain't no way to press ball. Right. So at the time that that wasn't working, right, a lot of people kind of sort of saw, okay, dad, the, 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 the high is giving up. The high is giving up. You, you know what I mean? Because when you're from Brooklyn in the high, no matter what you do, we come together, we don't give up. But at that point in time, a, a lot of people say they were seeing that. I didn't see it. And maybe that was... I didn't, I didn't see it, but now that you, now that you say it, I can see a rift happening. 
Right. Because well, anytime you transfer, that's, you that's a it. coach's job to fix. Correct. Right? Correct. Correct. Because you're coming from, he already experienced having Pearl and all the hoopla, right? Right. And Elmer. So they had, not only he right. had the best front line with y'all, he had the best, best back shooting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I was just like, I did, we never understood why he couldn't win it. Me and Coach Haskins talk about this. And it's yeah. crazy that Rick Holmes brought this up. He said, do y'all think that Aham players was influenced by Coach Haskins? Yes, they all had his mentality. Of course they did. That's they a, had that, that kill that's mentality. A, yeah. And they killed he raised together. Them. Right. He raised them. Absolutely. The Paul Brown. That. Paul Brown was cool, but I think what he didn't have, and I think later on, if he would have had, if he would have kind of let some of the street element, not the street dudes, because yeah, remember toughness. Paul Brown was totally against the streets, right? The street toughness. Now, when you got these players who are very talented, and now you can't mold and shape them to be winners, it's going to look bad in your legacy. Right. Look, he said, Joe Green, Paul Brown told him that he could come back to the high. Yeah, but G was supposed to go to the high in the first place. Right. He was to we talked about house. this before, right? Yeah. Vaughn, Vaughn went to the high. You know what? Uh, Paul Brown told him, mm. we don't take thugs or, or hook wow. thugs. Right. And, and Vaughn said he was crushed. Right. He said up to that point, he was, you know, trying to do the right thing, of course. Yeah. You know, he, he was doing both sides. But that crushed him as a teenager. And right. he totally gave up on everything. He totally gave up, right. I can you see know? that. That's so you, I, can, I can imagine someone like Paul Brown or Haskins, Haskins bringing Vaughn in. Then he's going to sure. mold and shape him. Right. To how he wanted to become. For Even sure. though you guys all did well academically. Because that's one thing right. I can say you guys did well academically. All you guys graduated. All you guys went to good schools. Right. So, hey, maybe he had a different plan. I can see that. I can see that. Now, I see that. So you see, I know you saw this, right? Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. You know, come on, fam. Come on, come on. It, 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 def, yes, yes. Definitely, Yo, definitely. I'm going to find out where you live at. Don't worry about it. You can't be rocking with that like that. That, that got to go somewhere, man. Right, right. So listen, now, when, when Let's talk about you going into your senior year, right? Did you play Golden Hoops? Did you go to any camps that led to your recruiting process? Yes. Again, me being Mr. Humble didn't understand that I had worked my way to a level, right? A level now. Because you remember, I always stayed humble. Right? I'm gonna say this against I'm gonna say this with G too. G always kept me humble. But I didn't know, right? G and Gil they always kept me humble. I didn't know who the level that I got to. That my name was being mentioned in the top bang. And this. Yes. Right. Yep. I, I but, yep. but see, I'm, I'm telling you for at, at, at that point in time, because I didn't really know what the ball, the basketball could get me in life. Remember, I'm just playing. I'm with all these great players, and I'm rolling. So, when 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 Loich and G and everybody, yo, we going to five star, right? Loich said, "Be here, citizens. We'll go to five star." Now, remember, this is not in the middle of the session. You know, if you, you know, if you top, you going to five star the first and the last week. If you're right? good enough. If you're good enough, right? So we went the first and the last week. I see, well, I was learning all this stuff. And then when they said that, um, you, you know, you're not going to be with the regular five-star campus. 
you're going to be a waiter. Right. You know what that means. And I'm like, for real? Right? But along, I had all these other people explain it to me. You know, um, I don't know if you guys remember. That's, that's how you worked off your money, right? That's how, I, that's how I worked off. That's how I worked off. That's how you worked off the money. But, you know, the, you know, it's always a top notch there. That's the, you know, the waiters and stuff like that. So I get to five star and I'm still in awe of the back of the game itself, the basketball game itself. So, you know, we get to five star, you got um, Danny Ferry, you got the um, Romeo Robinsons, you got the right in the, in the last, in the, in the last week. So, you know, the evening section in that barn was off the hook. Yes. Was off, was, was, was off the hook. Right. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, finish up because I have a question. And that's I when I realized, that. and that's when I realized who the hell Gerald Green was. Let me tell you something. Do that that five star camp with them point guards? Dude. Dude, that's what I gotta say. And he on now. That's all I got to say. Now remember again. Gerald, listen, Gerald always went out of town and kicked a lot of ass. Yes, but always. that five star, he was he owned all of all the point guards, even Ramel Robinson. Who he faced years later that's in the right. NCAA championship. That's right. That's right. And you know, they handpick you for the certain evening session to play. They're gonna pick you for that to play for that and, and put it together and play. And you know, you got Tom sitting down there with his book writing, you got Garth in the corner talking about, oh, this, 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 this is wonderful. Right. It's wonderful. Right? And there's only one thing that I did at five star, right? That boosted me up a little bit more. Right, I won Mr. State. I, I got the I got the best stations because every time from from learning to go hard in Brooklyn, I did all the stations. I went hard on all the stations, and I got Mr. Station. So that put me another. Next thing you know, I got Eggman coming to talk. Yo, we got to talk, man. When you get back to New York, you got to talk. So this that that little juncture right there in Five Star Camp put me bang, and I won Mr. Stations. <laughs> wow. And 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 Mr. Stations is is one of those things that the top guys win. I didn't even know that till I didn't even know that till coming. But as a big, but as, you did that as a big man. Yeah, Mr. Station as a big man. Usually that's God. Usually that, that's that's won by God. Yeah. And small foes, not not the big men. Yeah. So when I got that, that boosted me up a little bit more. Again, I'm gonna tell you again. I just don't realize not to say who I am because I'm staying because I'm staying humble. So now the name, not only that, now I got. You know what I'm saying? Now I got this. Now, oh, that's oh, yo, that's 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 like yo, that's that's Nesta Payne from Boys High. You know what I'm saying, Pooh? People understand how that how that when people start saying that, yo, that's yo, that's Pooh from Lincoln. You know, when when your name is in other people's mouths who know basketball, right? That's the greatest compliment yo, of the world. Yo, let me tell you, let me tell you. I told G this too. Um, Cole Slow said, "What do, what do you think was uh, the best?" To rep New York City, it's a lot. Cold, slow. It's we go. We'll be here forever. Oh man, please. Right. Different eras. You got to talk no. about eras. Huh? You gonna talk about the era? It's all different. Oh eras. yeah, yeah. But I, I want to get to the G Green story. It was my sophomore year, and I think we was about to play Western House or afterwards. I'm not too sure, but we were somewhere. And the place where a lot of ball players was, and Joe Green came up. And he was like, "Yo, what up, Pooh?" And he called me Pooh. Like, right? That's you got to be from the hood. You got to know right. that, right? And me being a sophomore, being in tenth grade, it made me feel so good. Yeah. Because I, mean, I went to Lincoln to play football, so for me to get noticed by you guys and start to improve, and guys see that I'm improving and giving my props. One of the biggest moments for me yeah. in high school. Yeah, so you understand what I'm saying. Salute, G. Green. Green. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying when people start calling your name constantly. Yes, like, it means yo, a you lot. You don't yourself that way. But here's the other side of that. Every time you step on the court, you got to live up to that. Because that's what they come to see. And that's a hard thing to do. Because New York City ball player. You have a bad so and so. Oh, yo, he's trash. He sucked. He's one sucked. bad game. One, oh. and all of a sudden, you ain't good no more. Right. 
Right. So you always got to live up to that. No matter where you go in New York City, you got to live up to that. Well, my guy, Seth Marshall, New York City legend, is the guy who gave me this jersey. And I think he gave it to me because it was a, uh, a gift you wanted to bring to the show. Yeah. And I knew he knew I went to Lincoln. Wow, he just throwing that. He <laughs> throwing it in your face. Nah, it's all love. Salute, Seth. So, let's go into this, right? My sophomore year, because I don't want to make it too much about just our rivalry, but yeah. I'm gonna tell you what you guys did for us, and this means it meant so much because Bernard and I talk about it. Tiny and I, you know, uh, Sean Williams. We still yeah. all came on the show, and we talked about how you guys helped us become champions. And I know when y'all guys was kicking our ass, y'all wasn't thinking about that. Y'all just like, yeah, we're going to get these motherfuckers out of here. But for us, it gave us heart. It gave us a willingness to win and never give up never and give never up. back down. Right. So I want to say thank you, man. I really appreciate yeah. it because I don't think without y'all, we don't win that city championship that next year. I got you. I got you. How many, sure. times, how many times throughout your basketball career did you cry? If you haven't cried over a game, think Yo, about it. I'm going to tell if you right now. If you haven't shed a tear over a game, and all the ball players in New York City know what I'm talking about now, if you're a real ball player, going after that, going after that win, and you, you ain't win that one, you might shed a tear like, mm. That's how you know. I you didn't shed a tear when we lost by twenty. Yeah, that's how you know you love the game. That was expected. Right. We knew going in. Right. And we didn't give up, but right. we knew going in. You right. know when I cried, and I didn't even play this game when we lost the year before to boys and girls by one. Got you. Yeah. I cried like a baby because I knew if we win that game, we win the city championship. Right. And kind of changed the course of history. Which uh, Ross Strickland and I went at it about when he came on the show. Right. I said, if we win, if we beat boys and girls, we beat y'all. Right, right, right. My my moment. And, was... I, and I can say that now because Sip won MVP in a wheelchair classic. Right. Against Ross Strickland and I. Right. That right. same year. That same year. Yeah. But let's get back to you, Ness. When you was at that camp, because we're going to go back to that camp. Before yeah. we go into Iona, not only do you run the station drills, who else did you bust, man? They were always trying to, I ain't gonna lie to you, and I think some, some people in Brooklyn always knew this. They always try to put Gerald King ahead of me. Oh, shit. They always. <laughs> Yo! Yeah. What? Now, you know I love Bernard, and I love... Yes, right? yes. But, but every time I turn pool, they always had Gerald King. And you know Joe Fanella's from Fort Greene. Right, and, right. And I keep telling, you, know, you, call, you call him Grip. I said, yo, Grip, man. Why they always... Grip is like, you know, Grip hyping it. Nah, Ness, I think he got you. Okay, so I'm, so I'm telling Grip, but I got to change my last name to King. He said, well, no, you, you just got to prove it. My man, that five star, you're not getting nothing here. No layups, no nothing. I let you get the ball on the post. Turn around, do your business. Up out of here. Still defensive minded. You're not getting you're not getting nothing out of here. That was that was the play. That was the play. Me and Eric Brown, too. Eric Brown was the one who kind of sort of started getting my offenses going. Cause when I transferred to the high. Eric just used to dog me, man, on offense. Eric just had beat. game. Eric just had game. And his motor. And his motor. Yeah, he, had, he just had game. So my thing was to play against him, and my thing was to play against Little Ant, to guard Little Ant, to keep working, to keep working on, 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 on my thing. So but, to Ant, I see him all the time. Yeah. Well, yeah, I used to have to play, I used to have to play against, against him just to. Yo, you know what's going to be, you know what's so funny? <laughs> That you mentioned Joe King? Yeah. Your brother. When I was reading the All City team, you are the last name on the third team. 
Right. Guess who's right under you with honorable mention? King. Joe King. King. Right there. And he was, so and I'm Joe figuring, was cool. I figured somebody would probably at that five-star game on Sunday. Yeah. Y'all playing against each other. He said, yeah. you know what? We want to make sure we keep that right there. We're going we to keep it right there. And Joe, because I'm going to say this. If you didn't, he probably, he probably would have been in your space, and you probably would have been in his space. Yeah. We, it, it, it's interchangeable. But I'm going to say this about Gerald. Nicest person. Yes. Most humblest person. You could have, you have no problems with him. He come, he hug you after the game. Yo, you played well. You played this. You played this. Right? Great human being. Even back then. Even back then. But you I want to, you know, you want to, man, because you was, you know, you guys, even though I was from Lincoln and I lived on this side, you guys always show love. Yeah. Always show love. Never, you know, just because I went to Lincoln and you guys went to the high, it was always that basketball brotherhood. Yeah, let me ask you also, too. Like, did we trash talk the way they trash talk now back then? Or we just let our game speak for itself? Nah, yeah. oh, I told you that. We, we talk shit. You talk shit, Ness. Did I? <clears throat> Especially if you punch somebody. If you punch somebody, shit, or dunk on somebody, you, you, it wasn't loud, but you let them know. Yeah, that's... You let it, yo, y'all was playing handball without shit. Yep. Yes. Y'all was playing, y'all was literally playing handball. And I think my coach said to us, just keep playing hard. Like it was, that was right. it. There was, was, was no That's it. What, what else could he say? It was a good 20. Right. I'll never forget it. Now, you said Gerald King was your arch nemesis. For Brooklyn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And yeah. you played with Riverside AAU. Yeah. Who were some of the guys that was on that team that made it to the NBA? Morton, right? I think it was John. I think it was John Morton, right? Um, you had G. You had Dow Walker, right? I mean, I don't know if they made it to the NBA, but I'm trying to think back now of of, of who was because remember it was a mixture of it was only five of us from Brooklyn. The rest. Yeah, of us I, what I what I wanted to say, what I'm trying to say is, yeah, that you guys are stacked with big time mid major Division One guys. Right. That was really, really good. Right. That just goes to show you how good the NBA was. Right. Because I tell people all the time, they ask me, you know, why you didn't get drafted? I say, yo, damn, I wasn't good enough. Like, the NBA was different. Oh, oh, oh you go through that too? You go through that too? Yo, why you didn't real. make it to the league? I tell people, it wasn't my Man. Decision. It was the fact that I went to another school. Like, we got to be real with ourselves. Yeah, my, I, I, my answer is, man, do you understand the dudes who's playing in the league right now? Do you understand their game? If you understood their game, you're not going to be asking me why you make it to the league. Stop. Stop that. And that's a that's a that's an honest answer. You like me? I give them an honest answer. I said, man, the guys in the league is great. Yes, Harold is exceptional. It's a big, big difference. Big difference. And you got to understand and know yourself. When when you was getting recruited, besides Iona, what other schools were recruiting you? Believe it or not, I got, uh, my visits was to Northeastern, right? I was supposed to go to UConn when UConn wasn't UConn. No, I keep telling people. Right. Uh, their biggest player was like 6'5 at that five. time. Right. The reason I didn't pick Northeastern is because the coach from Northeastern told me if I come there, and I really like there. First of all, Reggie Lewis is the one who picked me up from the airport. He was recruiting me to be Reggie Lewis practice player against, because that's who Reggie Lewis needs, somebody like me. He yes, told yes. me, he told me, you're not going to play for three years. Watch this. But you are going to be playing against Reggie Lewis every day in practice, and you're on the team. Right, and I think if you play against Reggie Lewis when he leaves, I think you're gonna have a shot to the NBA in that one year. That's how great Reggie Lewis was. Now, you know I'm from Brooklyn and, and and New York. You know somebody's telling me 
come to my school, but uh, Reggie Lewis is in front of me. I'm, I'm just going to give you the face on that one. I'm like, what? We really want you to come to the school. Because you already know what it is. Yeah. Mm, nah, I'm going with Eggman. That's who I'm going with. I'm going with Eggman. Eggman come to the jungle. everybody who Eggman is. Eggman is one of the greatest recruiters come from, from, from the East Coast as a coach, assistant coach. What a great recruiter. And he's straight up with you. Come here, earn your time. You're close to home. And that's the other thing, too. I wasn't too fancy about going a long way from home. A lot of people don't, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to cross country. A lot of people don't tell you that when you're playing ball and you're the top ball player. If you're from the East Coast, it's hard to be the McDonald's All-American from the East Coast and end up at UCLA. Because you kind of sort of got to kickstart yourself a little bit. I mean, you're a McDonald's All-American, but you're not known on the West Coast. You're known on the East Coast. Right. It's starting all over again. It's starting, it's starting all over again. So for me, being a mid-range high player or something like that, right, I want to stay a little, little, a little close to home. What? What? Okay. You got Iona, right? Mm-hmm. How did Iona's system fit your playing style? First year, Pat Kennedy let us go. You know, you got the city players, and we need to get up and down the court. That's my talent. I need to, do you know, I'm a sprinter. I need to run up and down the court. Don't get me yeah. wrong. We had offensive stuff, too. But we get the ball, and we all, we going. You know, kick that ball up to, to, to Richie, kick that ball up to Adlock, and stuff like that. We going. We filling lanes. We filling lanes. We almost made it to the NCAA Fairfield. That's a little history there at the, at the Meadowlands. Huh? Yeah, yeah. What, who, like, who, what was your conference back then? Like St. Peter's, the, right? Yeah, the MAC. We had we had St. Peter's, Fairfield, St. Bonaventure, um, um, Army. Right, we were in the MAC conference. Maris with the with, with the Duncan the what do you call it the Duncan Dutchman. Yeah, because and then when you kind of left, and then when I went to school, Maris came into our conference. Right. Right? Uh, I think uh, the school that was in your, uh, the school that you mentioned went to the Atlantic 10. What school was the St. Bonaventure? St. Bonaventure. Right? Right. They went to the Atlantic 10. So right. there was a lot of mixture and moving around going on back then. Yeah, you got LaSalle, with, with, with Lionel Simmons, right? Yeah, I you watched got a lot Peter, of the Darren yeah. Rowe and the crew. Right, it was a good conference. It was a good yeah. conference. A solid conference. Solid and I'm conference. telling you, all these players that played in that conference could have played in the Big East today and right. all these other places now. Right. And I was going to mention that's just how it was. I was going to mention Army had to Kevin, Kevin Houston. Kevin Houston Woo. that led the nation in scoring. That's right. From Army. From Army. And yo, and yo, Rick Calhoun was the coach back then at Army. No, at, at UConn. UConn. Yeah. Yeah, I was supposed to take a visit to UConn, but I, again, when I tell people that, they be like, oh, UConn? No, 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 UConn wasn't UConn. We, there was, they were building. <laughs> I, I told you, everybody was my size. I was like, I'm not coming here. They're yeah. in BC. I was like, yeah. we're the big men. Yeah. The different yeah. kind. What transition? Once you got to college, what transitions you had to make coming from high school? What the transition I had to make? What kind of transition you make you had to make off and on the court? Oh, off the court. I don't know, it was no joke when it came to them classes. I don't care what nobody say. Yeah, you had some teachers that love ball players, but you had the other teachers, because remember, you're coming from a Catholic diocese. You had some other teachers that didn't like athletes at all. At all. My transition was hard. I can get up to get to that class, that, that 8 a.m. English class. I don't know who signed me up for that anyway. I'm a ball player. I'm practicing. We're practicing three times a day, and you sign me up for an English honors 8 o'clock class in the morning. Are you kidding me? What? That was my biggest transition because I, I failed off the team just because of that. And I was playing as a freshman. I was getting a lot what, of time. What, what semester was that that you fell off? Huh? I, what semester year? did you fell off? Huh? Freshman year. Freshman year. 
I learned my, you know, was, was, this, it, was, we learned. was it too overwhelming? Was the college life too overwhelming for you at the time? I didn't understand. I didn't understand, right? Because I'm going to tell you the truth, right? When, when, when we're going through all this and we're coming from highly rated schools and we're playing with Riverside and we're playing with the outside team and stuff like that, cool, you know, we pampered. Everybody knows, you know, we pamper. We get what we want. We want some sneakers. Yo, my man, I need some sneakers. Okay, you want this? I need this. But when you get to that college atmosphere, right, and you got, you got to be successful in class, and you got people in class don't care about athletics, you got to understand those two things. So you got to understand how to do your stuff. From failing off that first year with that honors teacher, she did, she did not go to who you want to go to. Go to the provost if you want to go to, you're failing. Right? And I wasn't doing well in some other classes also. So along with that fail, right, to get that thing, I failed off. I failed off that freshman year. Wow. That was, a, that was the biggest learning. And Pooh, I was playing. Pooh, we were playing. We had some games on ESPN. I missed some games on ESPN and stuff like that. I learned my lesson from that day. That, that, that teacher that day, at the time, I was mad at. I don't know what I'm mad at for. I'm the one who's waking up late going to class, right? But that was the greatest life lesson I learned. Some people just don't care about the letters. I got to go get mine academically. And from that, it made me get my college degree. That lesson right there. Because I don't like that feeling not playing. And, and we won't make some noise for your ass waking up, cuz. Let me tell you something, man. Thank God you woke up, baby. Oh, that's yeah, that's in a lot of ways. Who I woke up on all different ways. Like, oh no, I gotta play. Right? Uh, and the worst thing about the worst thing about failing off, who, is that when it was on the road trips, I was on the campus and everyone on the campus, yo. What you doing? You gotta come up with that book. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh oh, you know how that is. You don't wanna I'm getting my charger. You know how that is. You don't wanna ask yeah. no questions it's like, yo, all right, all right, they're on the trip. On the trip, right? And you can't lie and say you injured because you know that would be in the paper. Because everybody knows. Everybody knows. Yo, big dust. Why let you me, feel? Let me say this real class? quick. One of your childhood friends is on here from PS3, Mike Reed, aka Brooklyn Mike. Brooklyn Mike. Oh, I ain't even talk about PS3. The half. We're gonna make some noise for my man right now. We're gonna make some noise for Brooklyn Mike. Definitely, definitely a Brooklyn legend. Hey, listen. Ray Haskins, when me and Coach talk, because I'm going to say this right now. Yeah. Coach Ray Haskins is the godfather to this show. Got it. I'm going to say this again. Coach Raymond Haskins, the legendary coach from Alexander Hamilton, Shaw University, Fez Academy, LIU, he's the godfather of the show. We talk all the time. All right. And I love hearing his stories. One of the guys he is most proud of. And I didn't even know this dude played ball. He always talks about Brooklyn Mike. Yeah. And how proud of Brooklyn Mike. Yeah. He always tell me how proud of Brooklyn Mike he is. And it's mind-boggling to me because I love when I hear about someone who I didn't know played ball. Right. I love that. And to see this dude for years performing, I've seen him perform plenty of times. Right. Who knew? Who knew? I knew. Who knew you were Vaughn? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Vaughn right. took you under his wing. Yeah. He knew it. Who knew? He knew it. No, I didn't know. I bet right. you made the people out there didn't know, and now they do. Yeah. It's amazing, Ness. A lot of stuff I'm just finding out. A lot of history. Now you get back on the team, right? Yeah, man. Now we back. Top or year. You get to travel. This is the James Majors question. Go ahead. In 1983, James Majors said they was getting five dollars for the road trips at Seton Hall. I think we were, uh, uh, you, you're talking about the um, the stipend money. When we go on trips, when we yeah. go on road trips, 
the stipend money that they break us off with. Yeah. It's called meal money. Meal money. The meal money. <laughs> Thanks, How much James Thanks, said he was bro. getting? Facts. How nah, much did think... get it? Nah, I think I think we was getting. We might have been getting 25, 30. Okay, okay, okay. We might have been getting 25, and, and you 30. you guys were before us. Okay. Right. We might have been getting 25, 30. You know, that's just that's just a little McDonald's thing. That's, that's, that's what all that is. It. They called it late a McDonald's night. $5. Yeah, that's late that's night. That's all they can get McDonald's the time. That's definitely it's crazy. McDonald's money. Yo, Ness, I like to share this little tidbit with the audience. Go ahead. Uh, especially with my guests. Do you know where the word upset come from? No. Okay. My coach told me in, I think, 1989, 90, we were playing Wake Forest. We had a two-game contract. Right. Wake Forest paid my school $80,000 for two games. This is how the business of basketball worked. So what big school did y'all play while you was at uh, Iona? Stop it. I can, I can name it to you already. We played North Carolina. Okay. We were the you first game. Here. Huh? North Carolina paid y'all school to play y'all. Yes. We, I mean, we, we, we knew it. My first huh? college game ever at Iona College was against North Carolina in the new Dean Smith Arena. They paid for y'all to come down. So this is what I'm telling you yeah. where the word upset come from because they pay the university the money. They basically pay they think they're going to win. They did. I know. That's how it usually works out. Right. But when they lose, it's called an upset. upset. They're not upset because they lost the game. They're upset because they lost the game and the money. And the money. So that's where it comes from. Yes. Got it. So I know this is why we was getting broke off with 150, 250, 300 dollars a road trip because we were a smaller school playing Got it. big schools. So right. my coach was always we was always playing the big schools. Right. So thought I, I, I share that, man. But big, but playing that big school, great experience. And I, I, I will say this, playing that first game, right, coming from where I came from, Pooh, if you understand something, and my first college game is against North Carolina in the new Dean Smith Arena. I mean, you just have to stand on the court and look around, and you get all the flashbacks. Everything comes back. <laughs> Everything comes back. Von Cosell, Coach Ray, Mick, da 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 flash, and then you just stand there on that court. And then you got to understand that time and moment in your life, right? You can't say you made it because, you know, you still got more things to do. But at that point in your life, you got to take a step back and be like, okay, give yourself a little something. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. Now let's go play. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. And we played. I know we lost. I know we lost double figures. We didn't do that bad for, for thinking about uh, that night. It may have been, I think we lost 13, maybe 15 points. We lost by, you know, but. And, and all in all, we had some moments. We did well. We had some moments. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that trip. No doubt. You know, yeah, I appreciate yo. that. Um, oh, Black is on here. Black from Boys and Girls. Say what up to Black. Black mm -hmm. is on here. Yes, that is comedian Brooklyn Mike. Played for Coach Ray Hasbro yeah. at Alexander Hamilton. Do you believe it? Do you believe he played it? played with some monsters. Yeah. And that means he had to be good. Like, Ray just not going to put you down just because. You understand? Right. Lloyd Daniels was the ball boy at Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton. Do you believe that? Lloyd was the ball boy. Yes. I got. I put up I always picture. thought Lloyd was an All-American since he was born. Yeah. He oh, came out oh, the womb All-American. Facts. <laughs> Coach Ray Haskins had 24 guys on his team. There were, it's 24 guys in this picture. I've never seen a team like this. Besides the 1967 DeWitt Clinton team. Right. They had about 22. 24 guys. Did, crazy. Coach, coach, did Coach ever win a chip citywide? Uh, city. 
Did he ever win a championship? Uh, uh, Coach, Coach Ray Haskins? Yeah. They won in their 81. Okay, got it. Got it. He said one of his, he said the one of the things he regret is not allowing his kids to go to five star. He said because he didn't know the benefits of them going to five star because Beetle, Andre Irvin. Yes, right, Andre. And and uh Jerry Ice Riddles, none of these guys was all American. Right. Jerry Ice Riddles was honorable mention. Shit, I was honorable mention. Honorable mention. Jerry Ice Reynolds was honorable mention. Go figure. Because Coach didn't allow him to go to those camps. Right. They played Brooklyn, USA. Right. And I think they, you know, look, Ross Strickland came on and said he didn't make the McDonald's All-American team because he didn't go to the last session of Five Star. You got to go to the last session of Five Star. You know, everybody knows that. Yeah, but but the politics did did I didn't know the politics of the game like that. The shit that I know now. Yeah, but when I went to, I didn't know the politics either of of the importance of being at the last session of the five star camp in Holmesdale, Pennsylvania. I learned that afterwards, and I wiped my brow and be like, "Ooh, gee, that was oh, that was that was a deep move." Oh shit! Rick Cove said Walter Berry was honorable mention too. What the? Different now, now we we could do a whole show just on my conspiracy theories about New York City basketball. Some politics, some politics, yeah, it's too many politics. I can walk politics. through a lot, trust me. Yeah. But now, now you get back on track in sophomore year, right? Yeah, what changes in your attitude and the thing that you need to do to stay on the team? Oh, it's definitely. Definitely uh, the classwork. Definitely I learned the nuances because when ball players go on a college campus, they got to learn the nuances about what class to take, what time to take your class, okay? You can't do really all evening sessions because that's going to run into your practice time and stuff like that. And you're supposed to have somebody, if you don't have anybody on that team working with the coaches to look at the team schedule and to look at the classes you need for what field you want to take, you're going to run into big problems. Okay? I learned that nuance. I learned that from everybody on the, um, who's, who, who, who's the great older than me. I learned that from Jeff Wilder and Richie Simmons and all of them. Listen, do this, right? Uh, we had a, a, a counselor, right? I learned how to go to the learning center and open myself up to other people on the campus. <laughs> Right, I stayed. I stayed in the in in, in the in the Rudin Luders uh, Learning Center. I became a fixture in there because that helped me. When I'm not on the basketball court, I'm over here. It kept it kept me sane and it kept me going with my classes to bring my average and stuff up. See, it wasn't just all about when you become a when you get a college scholarship, right? It doesn't just become about all ball unless you know you're going right. straight to the league, right? And that's and, and you start learning those life lessons because you know you got the right people whispering in your ear. Yo, the ball ain't gonna last forever. The ball ain't gonna last forever. You know, I had a coach. I'm gonna mention him, Ronnie Williams. He used to tell us, "Yo, four years go by real quick. What you gonna do?" Every practice he used to whisper at me, "Yo, big nets, four years. It goes by quick." Pool, I swear, blink of an eye, I was at the senior game with my parents. But Blink of an eye, like, oh, what you going to do next? What's your plan next? What you going to do next? Right? Again, these are, these are the mid, these are half the ball players right now playing, playing in, 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 all in colleges. 80% of the ball players. 20% might make it to go further. You can't, you can't, right? And I'm, I'm going to be real about it. You know, you're out, was Europe. Notice I said was. They don't necessarily need you in Europe right now. They got their own ball players. Back in the 80s, oh, it was good. The fact that you broke down, going to the learning center, creating a different environment for yourself, becoming yeah. part of the learning environment yeah. to where people can start, you know, sharing ideas and knowledge with you. Yeah, they and see I think you younger differently. Younger kids need to understand that. In college, you're going to have to set your own schedule. 
you gonna have to set your time and your life schedule in college because you gonna have to play basketball and work out. That's that's something that's that you fact. definitely gonna have to do. Yeah. Those academics, you're gonna have to manage. Right. And then you're gonna to wanna to have a social life. So right. You're gonna to have to manage all of those things that At one to time. You gonna have to juggle it. Yes. You juggle it. And and but if you come in on that on that campus, no matter what campus you go on, and you're coming with your with, with your arrogant ways, thinking that you right and you don't want to learn nothing, oh you're not gonna be there for long. And you're gonna blame everybody else. Yo, why you left the school well school the, the, the school? Okay. If you say so. You know, you I mean I mean that goes along for all the big major colleges. You know, St. Bonnie, St. Peter, same th thing. Your mid-range player. You know, everybody gets to get on. Everybody gets to be on ESPN sooner or later. So that's not a big deal no more. You know what I'm saying? It's not a big deal no more. That you know, no, I, you know it's, it's real. Yo, it's so real. I'm talking it's real. So real. That's not a big deal no more. What you going to do? Are you? Uh, are you know for yourself if you're going to get a shot? You know, you know that for yourself. If you're going to get a shot at the D League, you know for yourself if you're going to get a shot. You know, I'm not killing nobody's dreams, okay? You got to know for yourself if that's going to be your route, is this going to be your route, that's going to be your route. If you don't know that, right, coming up to your junior or something year in, in college, or you have people working with you, that's a problem as a ball player. Now, nowadays, that's a problem. Yeah, speaking of hoop dreams, what's up to my guy, Jay Kwan, hoop dreams? What up, ball head? D. Glover, what up, what up? And my man, Jay, what up? So, what what would you consider your best game at Iona? Two of them. Okay, walk me through. Mac Mac Championship against Fairfield. Against um, AJ. Tag AJ 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 Weiner, I think it is. They had two okay. million point guards at at, at uh. My man, if I don't, if you, my man Rick Combs, I guarantee you, he'll yeah. find out. Who is that Rick Combs? Fairfield. Fairfield. I only get Fairfield. What was the first name? What was the first name of the guy? I think it was, uh, they had, the, they had the, a point guard and a shooting guard. And I think one of them was AJ something. Okay. So that game, let me explain to you. AJ Winder. AJ he Winder. Went to Dal Coxum. You know Dal Coxum from Western House? Right. Salute. Yeah. Right. He came before us. Yes. We, yes. We, AJ Winder. AJ yep. Winder. There you go. Oh my God. We were up 18. Up 18. I'm going to explain this. I'm telling you again. We were up 18 points starting the second half. Took a L in overtime. Man, that was and that was the that was right because the only thing I saw at halftime is us going back on the bus on North Avenue, going to Iona College like this. Yeah, we're going to the map. We're going. We're going to the NCAA's. We made it to the NCAA's. Man, they put together a package with AJ, and they started shooting that basketball. Is you know you know when a team get hot, a team get hot. Yo, Ooh, bro. When somebody get hot, they used to get hot. Either they get I hot, either know. they hit the three, or they're on the foul line. Did you know AJ Wanda played in the backcourt with Billy Donovan? Yeah, really. AJ Wanda is from St. Agnes, the great St. Agnes team. Right. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. wow. Yo, they know it. it they know it too. They 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 got us. We got, you know, we were rolling all of a sudden. We were rolling, right? Yo, we got tired. Tell AJ he needs to come on the show. Because I'm with the other Somebody half get in score. contact with AJ. He knows. Down eight. Iona was up 18, and AJ wanted to board him back. What board him back. did he finish with? Board him back. AJ board him back. They started chipping, chipping. He hit them threes. They started getting them, 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 them running one-handers. And next thing you know, you, and you know, when you get a roll, and one thing, I must say, right, we were actually... We actually was telling the coach, Chip knows this too. We were telling the coach, listen, they're up 18. We were getting tired. Take us out. Give us a, didn't take us out. 
by the time they got down to that last thing to tie the game up, we were uh, we were done. We wow. were done. Chip will tell you if he's still on here. That was a hurtful game. I mean, that game, everybody cried in the locker room. After what did you do? That game? Oh, the first half. The first half was, I, think, I did very well the first half. I mean, I was just in a groove the first half. We all were, but I was just in a groove. I mean, I was doing underhand layups and, and stuff like that. I, I remember that. I, I remember that. I think if we would have finished off, and I don't know if everybody else might all agree with that, but if we would have finished off that game the way we were supposed to, I may have gotten MVP for that game. That's how much of a great first half I had in that game. What so what what did what did Fairfield do besides hand AJ one hundred the ball? What it was just him that made the difference? Took the guys off the bench, right? And the coach knew he was tired and pressed us to death. Had us keep running, had us keep running. But on offense, AJ got the ball. It was AJ Winder, and they had a – and tell him to look this up, too. I think AJ was the two. I want to know who was the point guard or who was the second guard. Both of them, right? And then he was just switching people out. Okay, go press them. So, you know, when you press a team, first of all, you're up 18, and you're pressing us, and we're getting tired. We're not really looking to score. We're looking to right. survive. So we're surviving when they're hitting shots. And you look up, oh, no, we got it, we got it. So we're thinking we could turn it on – when we need to turn it on, but not when you playing 37 minutes. He not said you... AJ was the point guard. Who's the, <laughs> who's the two guard? So he had a two guard with him. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. What was the other game? You said you had two that was memorable. 17, 16 for 16 at the foul line. 17 for, or 17 for 17. I didn't miss a foul shot that game. I think I had 42 or something that game. I don't know if that was at Army or was that anything. And I don't know if I still hold the record really for the most free throw made at Iona. I think it was 16 for 16 or 17 for 17. Not too sure. That particular game, I didn't miss a free throw. Uh, he says, kept by the name of Tony George from New Jersey. <laughs> They put it on us. They, the, I remember the two guards put it on us coming back at, at, in the Meadowlands. Right. On ES, I might have been on ESPN too because it's, it's, it's to go to the, you know, it's to go to the NCA. We made it to, it's to go to that group, that East group. That's crazy. I'm trying to see, do they have individuals? I'm trying to look to see if they have directed on here. Uh, I think it might have been Yoda. 16 for 16. 16 for 16, you said? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't miss a foul shot that game. Wow. I, I can't find it for right now. Ended up having... that's, that's crazy. Yeah. 42, which is crazy. Yeah. All right. So, what, you know, college start to wrap up, you graduate. Moving towards your senior year, did you have any thoughts of going overseas at first? What was your thoughts, and how did that come about? That came about from when I was getting ready to graduate, and I think I was, you know, you you know, you back on Gates Avenue in the summer, and you're just trying to stay in shape. I don't know yes. if anybody remember this coach, Les Pilgrim. Yes, yeah, Les Pilgrim. Yes, yes. yes. Les Pilgrim. Les Pilgrim. You know, he's, he was like, he was like my, my, my mentor. And he kind of sort of directed me of, 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 of what's your next step. Did he coach the Sun Devils? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Coach the Sun Devils. See, there I go again, another coach. Yeah. <laughs> another coach. So to keep playing, I went on a tour team. He called, somebody called me. I went on a tour team in Texas. And from Texas, I ended up getting a contract to play in Mexico. One of the best times I had the first year, because we went to the championship and lost at the, the last second in, 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 I think it was Guadalajara. It was, right. it was packed. So that gave me the bug to kind of sort of keep playing. 
Yeah, I played in Mexico uh, that, that first how year. Long, how long and after did you that, stay there? How long did you stay there? I stayed there a year because because you know when you go to those when you go to this country, you want to get to the country that you want to get to. Because again, reality hits. You only have a certain time period to make a living playing this game. Right. Bottom line. That. If you're not on that top level, if you're not going to, you know, so I came back at that time and um I played in the city city college tournament. I played the city college tournament, and from city college tournament, right again, like I said, I had a little agent, and all of a sudden I ended up playing in the D League, but I'm playing trying out for the D League in Michigan. Okay, okay. So after that, so so you know that's politics. Who that's politics? Ain't no New York City player coming to Michigan D League and playing on a Michigan <laughs> team and getting run. Knock it off. Knock it off. I should have just stayed right here Tell with James people, Ryan. Hey. Uh -huh. Yeah. I should have stayed. Yeah. I should have just get try to get with James Ryan and play for the New York team or whatever it is. But from that, when I said, "Man, I went to do that tryout," people, you know, you got the players from Michigan. They they low bridging you. Are oh, you from New York, man? You can't get to the basket and do do nothing. I right, said, you right. know what? Let me get my little options. And from that, I started going overseas. Um. Um. Let me give another tidbit. Myself and Biz, half man, half amazing, played in Finland together. Really? That's my That's guy. He was on the show as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We played in Finland together. And from Finland and stuff like that, you know, once you start playing overseas and you do well and they know you're not going to be a problem, let me give you a wink, in their country, they know you're not going to do nothing crazy. You don't be out at night drinking, getting drunk and all other stuff like that. You know, your name will get, you know, and um, from that, I ended up Finland, a um, little stint in Spain, um, um, ended up in Puerto Rico. So I played, a little, uh, I played a little while in Puerto Rico League because I wasn't an American citizen yet. Can you believe it? All I this time that you've been in America? All this time. I still had the Trinidad citizenship. So, so... In Puerto Rico, you know, they can only have two Americans. But I had the island citizenship. So that's how I got picked up for there for a couple of years. Because I'm not an American, but I am an American. So they have three Americans on the team. So how long altogether did you play overseas? 91 till 90. Wow. No, 89 till maybe about Maybe 97, 98. Damn. That's an awesome pro career, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's an awesome pro career. Yeah. Oh, uh, my yeah. guy Rick Holmes said, did you play with uh, Wes Carrera in Puerto Rico? Yes, I did. Played against him. One of those cool guys. Yes. Who did you play with? Cool, cool, <laughs> cool guy. Right? And, and, and I got to give and I gotta give my man, um, Keith Stroud, a, a shout out. Yes, because this is the reason why this happens. So yeah, I got to give Keith Stroud a, a shout out because, you know, I, I brought him down just to give him, I brought him down to PR. He had a great time. He had a great time. I actually, I actually moved to Puerto Rico and was going everywhere else. Wow. Because cause I, I loved it so much. I was just like, listen, I'm living in PR right now. And I'll go everywhere else from there. That's crazy. Look, as you see in the back, right, I got Ephraim Whitehead. We celebrating Grady this week. Okay. They had their reunion, um, and that comes from our artist. Okay. I just found out this morning he he should be on his way back uh, from his vacation that he okay. took, and it's for his birthday because we both are cancers, and he told me I'll have that picture for you. So okay. there's a lot of pictures that uh, once I get that this week, I'll definitely send it out to you, bro, for sure. Got you. you know what I'm Got saying? You. I want to show you. I want to show you a lot of love, man, because again. I hope I brought a different perspective of, you know, everybody always want to know about the elite, about the elite, about the elite. But there's so many of us, right, in, the, in that we're elite too, but everybody has different paths and everybody has different route. And just because you don't make it to the elite doesn't mean you're not successful. Right. Because getting that college degree to me was successful. That kicked me on for a couple of years. And the first thing Mick ever told me is that when you're finished playing, let me know. And Mick was the first one to give to give me. I told him, "All right, Mick, I'm done, right? 
that started me off in my educational career. All right, I became a sub at Boys and Girls High School, and then I moved on from there to, you know, get, getting, becoming an assistant principal, all that stuff like that. But Mick was the first one to tell me, when you finish playing, come back. And that's what you need Salute. around you. Salute. All and right. That's the Derrick coach, Frank Mickens. Frank Mickens. Played a part of my life was uh, my coach at Empire State Games. That's right. You always give me and show me a lot of love. Boom. Did we go together? Principal at Boys and Girls, I had to see him in the neighborhood. Boom. Great man. Going? Did we go to Empire State together, or we went the year before? Yes. This we went the, together? Yes. You yes. was all on that bus going up there. I I played I played five years at Empire State. I played one year high school yeah. and four years open. Got you. Was, what, were you on that that team with uh, me, Ross Strickland, Derek Chivas? Was you on that team? No. I don't remember. Okay. I, might, I don't know. I might have. I don't, that's how me and, you know, me and Rod, me and Rod, right? I, love, I just love, I just love Rod, man. Me and Rod is cool. Like, no, you speak. I, no, 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 no. Eric Brown was the only guy from Boys and Girls on that team. Right. But we, but, but we went with Eric Brown. I, huh? played, I played the Empire State game one year. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It probably was the, it probably was the year before, the year after. Okay. Because I, I was there regardless, yeah. Okay. But that, that was an amazing team. How was your time at Empire State? Because I know we used to always go up there and take goal. Oh, we, we got the goal. We have to. Are you kidding me? You can't go up there and not get no goal. You got to go up there and get it. Everybody knows it. Facts. One Facts. question. The next time I come on, right, I want you to find out this question. And this is a question for you to ask Rod Strickland. Where did he disappear that year or that summer? And when he came back, he became a legend. He went to Oak Hill. So he went to Oak Hill, and then when he came back, he had all that with him. What do you mean? What, what year? Tell you something. What year? I was, hey, uh, I don't, I'm see, not, we don't ask Rod, because Rod, Rod went away for a couple of weeks. I don't know it's for the summer. And when Rod came back, oh, my God. He was out of the city. He was like, you know, everybody see Rod or everybody see, everybody see Rod? He might not even remember that. But when he came back to so, New York listen, City. If you scroll, I have to find it and I'll send it to you. Okay. He talks about that whole process. All right. He talks like right. I, I I'll send it to you. Send he talks about me. that whole process. And remember, he was going away to camps early. This is why he didn't go to the last session of Five Star. He was like, I was busting these guys' ass all year. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't need to go there to do it again. That, right. That's how he was thinking in his mind. He wasn't thinking about the politics. And he wasn't thinking like he was all that. He was just like, he did that. I think he stayed home to play Golden Hoops or something. Right. Right. Okay. Okay, send it to me. Send it to me. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Give him a, all right? Uh, we ain't finished yet, fam. Okay, keep asking. You got a few more. Okay. The top high school, college, and pro you ever played against? Three players. Top high school? Top high school, yes. That I ever, that personally I ever played against? Yes. Camden with Kevin Walsh. Who? Camden, right? I think Camden High School, whatever, but it was with Kevin Walsh and a crew. Got you, got you. Top got high you. school I ever played against. <laughs> Jam packed arena. Top high school. What about top, college? Top college. North Carolina. No. The top player in college. Oh, the top Not player? Team. Yes. All these are top players. Ooh, the top player in college I played against. DePaul, Dallas Comagees. He was a problem. How do we forget? He was a problem. How do we forget Roman Catholic great, Philadelphia great? He went to high school with my guy Mel, Mel Hawkins. We played yeah. together at Fairleigh Dickinson. He also went to Roman Catholic. Yeah. When I tell you, I was right, at the Garden. Bro. Listen, at the Garden was a problem. For me, was a problem. He killed y'all like that? That is Tommy G's support. At the Garden was a problem. And I was trying to give him the business. And it was like, come on, man, stop. 
Go over there. You're not big. You're not strong enough. Let me, you know. Right? One time he, he went like, to Duncan. He was like a, he was like a toned down version of Lim Baez. Would you yes. say that's correct? Yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah. Six, eight, you yeah. shoot it, you bust it on your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very athletic. Very strong. athletic. Strong. I think one time he had, he had the dunk and he looked at me and he was like, I think you had enough. Let me just lay it in. I don't want to dunk on you no more. He said no more. Yeah, he looked at me like with his look. He said, no, 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 take that lay in, man. That's, you had enough dunks on you. And it kept it moving. That was a problem. And the top pro. Dang. I don't know this kid's name. I played him in Puerto Rico. He just got released from the Boston Celtics. And he came down for the program in PR. Big, chubby, left hand. Had a, he had his, I think he had his tooth now that had space in his tooth. And I played them in PR. Pro. When I tell you pro, but look and, and look what we look what we're trying to tell these young kids about the pro. Yeah. This dude was a pro. Left hand, six eight. Maybe he was he was riding three ten or something like that. Left hand could shoot out the gym, and he just got cut from the Boston Celtics. It came down to Man, PR. Let me tell you, when I realized, I had a lot of work to do. Um, it was my sophomore year playing against Mike Morrison, and Mike Morrison got drafted by the Phoenix Suns. He had 30 on me and talked to me the whole game. Just talking to you. He was telling me how good I was going to be. He was telling me, yo, you're a real deep, you're a really good defensive player. This would work on somebody else if they wasn't me. <laughs> right. Wow. Right. Yo. He called me like this one time. I had my foot on the offline. And you could do that back then. One foot out, one foot, one in. foot in. Yeah, you can do that. Right. That motherfucker jab stepped me. Even though I was already off, I moved. He spit and dunked it on my man back with baseline. And me and my man's got a fight because he thought I let, let him go. On. I was like, yeah, there yeah. was nothing I could do. Yeah, it's a done deal. So those the difference. You, it's a total different. You could be as nice as you want in your conference, around your way, in your neighborhood. There's another level to There's it. There's another level to go to. There's a, just, just another natural level. And part of it, if you don't have it naturally, you know, like I tell these kids, you're not going to go to the gym and become Shaq. You're not going to go to the gym and become Kobe. Let's knock it off. Now, I'm not killing your dreams. Please go work out and shoot 5,000 shot shots a day. But you're just not going to go to the gym and become these people. Become yourself. And even become yourself, understand, yourself might not be good enough for the league. Accept that. That's a harsh Preach. reality for people to accept. Great. That's a harsh reality, especially for athletes, because everybody's kicking in your head since you've been nine years old. You're going to make it, you're going to make it, you're going to make it. But at some point, you got to come to your reality and be like, Okay, I really may need to get this college degree. Okay, I'm going to keep that option open, get the degree, right? And I'm going to go try to go to the D League and all these other camps. And I'm going to go overseas and play and stuff like that. But you still got that thing. Because you know for yourself, Pooh, every ball player that I seem to talk to right now, you look and know for yourself, right? And you're looking and you're going to go, mm, that's not me. They're great. I'm good. I'm great. Yeah. My own thing. Yeah. That dude is nice. Yeah. You know, you just know it. And I think a lot of coaches these days coming up with these AUs and throwing this and throwing this and all, all this other thing. I don't think they I don't think they prepare the kids for the reality for that moment. Because everybody wants to get somebody else. Kids give up quick. Right. They give up quick instead of going through the process and joining gangs or something to put their life at danger. Right. It's like a total extreme. And it's not all kids. Some kids just don't want to play the game and put in the work. Right. But then you got the kids who quit and, and go to the streets and, you know, live a hard life that way, man. So yeah. hopefully these lessons can help some of these youngsters stay out of those pitfalls. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Top five, top five, top five, top five. Top five players from boys and girls, in your perspective. Top five from boys and girls. Yep, this is this is where the person starts. Come on, man, stop. Number one, there's, there's, there's the number one person, ain't no pressure. Let's get Pearl out of the way. All right, everybody know that, number one, Pearl. That's Pearl, yep. <laughs> I don't listen, man. You're talking about from my era now, because I can remember some of the older players from Boys and Girls. Now, if you look like like whoever you think was the top five at Boys and Girls, is it Connie Hawkins from Boys and Girls? He's from Boys High, but we can say that. Yeah, Connie Hawkins, Boys High. I'm gonna go old, yes, yes. right? Now let me come back to my to my era, right? Gotta go. I gotta go with Elmer. Shoot. Sure. Elma. I got to go with Elma, sure. If you want to say Elma boys and Anderson girls, top five. Got you better in the show. Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I think I have that. Let's more less. Thought I had. Oh, here you go. So you see what kind of work my God do here. And yeah. we'll get to your last two. All right. All right. This is Alma Anderson. There you go. There you go. Okay. So just imagine what yours going to look like, brother. Got you, got you, got you. Somebody All right, put you up got here. two more. Somebody put up here. So I said, Connie, somebody put up Lenny Wilkins? Lenny Wilkins, Richie Gordon. Those are all official right there. Lenny mm. Wilkins, he was after Bob Cousy. Yeah. It was Lenny Wilkins. Then after Lenny Wilkins, Richie. It was Tiny Archibald. Then after Tiny, then Pearl came. From the hot, all from the hot. No. I'm you talking, talking about the like boys the and girls in New York. Okay. Bob Cousy in the fifties, where it should be my guy from oh, I forget his name from Jefferson, who was better than him. But then the sixties, you get Lenny Wilkins. Seventies, right. you get Tiny. Eighties, you get Pearl. Got you. Got you. Got you. New got York you. City basketball. That's New York City basketball players. Got sports. you. Got you. All right. So who threw up? So somebody threw up Lenny Wilkins from the high. Lenny Wilkins from the high. Facts. I don't know, man. You might have to go top ten. Top no, no, no. All right, all right. Top five. Top five. Top five. Top five. All right. All right. All right. All right. Because, you know, I got to no. give these guys the respect. I got to give them the respect. I got to give them the respect, man, because they're throwing up. And I'm remembering now. Okay, Lenny, Richie. Oh, my God. So I got Elma, Connie. Yeah. I mean, I got Pearl. Yeah. Connie, Elma. Right, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go old school news. All right, I'm gonna do. Yeah, I, I I know about Lenny Wilkins, so I gotta go with Lenny Wilkins. Okay, I'm, okay, I okay. cannot disrespect the high without Lenny Wilkins. All right, facts. So and I got one more. I got one more. Yes, I'm gonna give him his props. Right, because I'm longing to see him too. I'm gonna give him his props, dudes. Everybody, hear me. I think Eric Brown was one of the greatest boys high ball players. Yo, and I'm seeing him from the look no, You ain't gonna get no argument for me. Let's make some noise for Eric Brown. I think right Eric Brown's one of the greatest boys high ball players. Not only, not only was Eric Brown one of the top ball players and played with the best in the city. He right. played with the Ross Stricklers, Lloyd Daniels, right. Boo Harvey. He was on that team. He was on that team because he was Gauchos. He was Riverside. Facts. Facts. So he played with the elite, the upper echelon. Okay? Right. Let right. me tell you something about Eric Brown. One of the most fierce competitors ever, but 
one of the most nicest guys you God, ever yes. want to meet. And yes. will give you the shirt off his, off his back. back. Yeah. Don't mess with him because he can knuckle up and do these. But yeah, he was nice with those two. Yeah. Yeah. Great guy. Great guy. You need to tell Eric he needs to come on the show. Yeah, we got to find him. I if know somebody he's going to find him. Let me go put it out there. Sheriff. Huh? Huh? I said, I, I know said he's we gotta Miami. find him. He's, he's, he's a Miami top sheriff somewhere. We're going to track him down. Okay, got it. Got it, got it, sure. got it. Okay. Two shout outs. Two shout outs I'm going to give. Go ahead. Right? Mark Diaz, I ain't forget about you. Right? And I'm going to say this. Let's not forget that the boys high JV team could have been a varsity team at any other high school. Bring the, bring the phone down. Bring the phone down a little bit. Come this what you say? I said, let, let's not forget, boys high JV team could have been a varsity team at another high school. JV had the Mo Kirby's, the Ties, the... Let's not forget that. All right? And the second... And this, of, uh, yo, hold on. Mo was on varsity. Say what? Mo's on varsity because I was at Bo me and Mo, Mo was on varsity. But, he was on varsity and Mo, yeah, but Mo, and Mo was he was, but Mo when Mo first came as a freshman, they shuffled him in between both. Got you. Oh, so he can keep his game sharp. We yeah. didn't have a JV at Lincoln. So it's yeah. like you're gonna ride yeah. this pod and hope we win by yeah. 20 so we can get you in the game. Yeah. All right, last two top fives, and I'm gonna get you out of here. Top five New York City players all time. Yo, why you put me on the spot, man? This is what we do. This is basketball. Why man. you put me on the spot? I'll fish you home for New York City basketball. Yeah. New school or old school? This is your top ten. I mean, your top five. Nobody else. All time? My top five. My top five, it switches up. Stephon Marbury. Uh... Rolando Blackman, Chris Mullen, Connie Hawkins, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's my five. Kareem. Lenny. Pearl. Mmm. Hey, dude. This is from my perspective, from what I see. And I'm going to go with that changed New York City. Walter Berry. Okay, okay. I'm going with Walt. I'm going with Walt. Walter B. That, you, you can't lose. I'm going with Walt. Last one. Right? Last one. Top five ever. I gotta go with White Jesus, Chris Mullen. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with I got, that. I gotta go. I gotta go with him. I gotta go with him. I gotta That's go with him. That's a good top five. We're gonna get some make some noise for that. All right, now, before we get you out of here, I need to know. Cause we came up in that era. Uh-huh. Don't put me in the spot again. Hip hop artists all time. Oh. St. St. James and St. James and Gates, Clinton Washington, Biggie baby. You got to go there with me. You on the same block. St. James and James. St. James and Fulton right over Gates right there. Dude, you know I've it seen is. it live in front of Bodega at, at Clinton and Washington. I've seen it live with the battle. Stop. We going with Biggie. Absolutely. That's an easy no question. Doubt. That's an easy question for me. You know? You got four more. Oh, I got to go to the top? Top five? Top five, yeah. Biggie? Oh, come on, man. New York. Oh, Big Nas. LL. Oh, come on. Rakim. Rakim. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Rakim. And I got to go with one more. Oh, I'm sorry. 
people may play me out for this one. Five Doll. Five Doll. Rest in peace. Facts. Facts. That's it. Definitely. I want everybody to know Rakim has a live mixtape album out right now with DJ J. Period. Go check yeah. it out. I put out the single uh, yesterday on my Instagram page, so definitely check out the guard. Yo, Ness. Wait, this ain't gonna be our last time talking. No, we gonna, gonna talk more. Man. We gonna talk more. We, now, we, now, we, now, well, I got your number back. Yeah, we, we gonna even, keep this connection listen, open, man. We didn't even get to the Gary Massey era. Oh, uh, Gary we, Massey. We didn't even get to the Gary Massey. And, and yo, I love this because when guys name these dudes, it's like this. Is what I tell people. People always ask me, Yo, G, I I got my man in California, Philly. No disrespect to any other state. But we have so many ball players here that never got a chance to tell his story. Right. I need to focus on New York City, baby. This is what it's about. Can't blame us. That's where we're from. He said Kenny Anderson. Yeah. But yeah, he yeah, got yeah. on everybody list. Like, hold on. My man Ness put LL and Fight Dog in his top five. You know Absolutely. he's different. Absolutely. And can you question it? Could you question it? I know everybody can argue everybody got their top five. Remember, they got to remember, too. They got to remember, too, right? I'm doing my top five for my live vision. I've seen Pearl shake somebody out of bounds and bring them back in bounds and yeah. say, are you ready again? Right? Kenny Anderson, yeah, absolutely. But Kenny Anderson came after me. You understand? Yeah. He came yeah. after me. You know, and Kenny is my man, but he said, "For my, from what I, from what I've seen, locked." Hey, Brooklyn Mike, I'm definitely gonna do that. Yeah, Brooklyn Mike, no I'm give you his number. You know what I'm saying? So you guys can connect and make get that PS3 connection back going. And also, too, I just saw somebody put up um, what's his, um, Obet. That's my brother, man, Obet Vasquez. That's Obet. my brother. Obet will be on the show soon as well. No problem. Oh, bet that's my brother. No Put him up. Shout that's out to him. God. Absolutely. No All of them, man. Oh, that's my Puerto Rico connection. Oh, bet true. Facts. Uh, Facts. Jerome, Facts. Vinci, BJ. All y'all, man. All, all, all the PR crew. BJ Carter. BJ Carter. Was supposed to do the interview last year. He started his own cleaning business. Yeah. And he got really busy. He could so get hopefully. You. Yeah. We you know, name reach out. Let him know. Yo, you need to get on Pooh Show, man. Get on G Show, man. Come on. Who bring me but back? He, he agreed. Bring me he back. Him and his brother True. Yeah, we bring me back. We got a lot time. to talk about. I can talk about Puerto Rico. I can spend two hours on, on PR. Oh my God. Yo, we gonna do this again, Ness. All right, sure. All right. All right. right. And I'm, I'm gonna send you my uh, number right now. All, All right. right. No problem. My God, appreciate you, man. Love to everyone, man. Love to everyone. I appreciate you, Pooh. You brought back some memories, man. This is the first no time. Doubt, man. I love you, my brother. Good when to see you, you called, too. when you called me. This is the first time I really had to, because I was thinking about doing a book, actually, from what I've seen and people who didn't make it and people, you know, I was thinking about doing a book. But this is the first time, you're the first person who actually had me. I got to think for the show. Dang, I had to go way back to Rashi, Rashi Bob and come all the way up and stuff. That's deep. History, the basketball history, your own self-individual basketball history could be deep. And you don't even realize it. You don't even know. So well, I appreciate you. Brother. I'm, we together ready, from now man. on, man. We ain't gonna never miss each other again. That's a done That's deal. That's right. We're gonna make it happen. We're gonna make it happen. All right? For sure. My brother, I love you, man. All right. Peace. Peace no to doubt. everyone. Thank you. For sure. Yeah. Hey, listen. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. It was good to reconnect with my guy. I haven't seen him over 30 some odd years, yeah, man. Yeah, 30 years, and, yeah. And, and get the put those pieces back together and see where his life is taking them and the journey that all started with this. All started with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so what we do in New York City is yeah. a brotherhood. A brotherhood united strong. Got it. We're going to do it every Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding, and you've been checking out my guy, Nesta Payne. And this is Basketball Heads. That's right. To fit you home for New York City basketball. See, next we got the we got the merch. You know what I'm saying?
right? And what it says on the back. What it says. Okay. You I'm coming. Send it to me. Don't, Yo, don't matter. I Listen, got, first I got of all, all sizes, all colors. First of all, make it happen, fam. do you have a 4XLT? See, the smile went off your face. Do you have a 4XLT? What you say? Do you have now a 4XLT? Now let me pull out on you, fam. Now let me pull out on you. Now let me right. pull out on you, fam. Okay. No, that... no, no. I, 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 but I got a 4X. I got a 4X that will be here this Saturday. Got you. So I got you, fam. All right. No problem. All right, man. No doubt. Real talk. Thank you for joining us. You've been watching Basketball Head. So I'll fish you home for New York City basketball. Peace. Peace.